Rugby World Cup 2023, folks. Georgia and Portugal I haven't written up the whiteboard yet because if you haven't seen this one, stop the video now and go watch the game. It was crazy. Really, really crazy. Worth watching if you don't know the result. Don't look it up. Go watch it. Or even just watch the highlights before you know the result because it was genuinely nuts. Right, I'm going to write the whiteboard up now. Well, what a game. You know me, folks. I love a close game. And it doesn't get any closer than that. 18 points to 18. Portugal draw with Georgia. They were supposed to lose this one. Georgia was supposed to be challenging the likes of Fiji and maybe even a, a kind of off-the-boil Australia side, but they can't get past Portugal. What a crazy game. Game of two halves goes with the cliche. Apologies for not getting up to watch this one live, but I didn't know the result. Thank goodness. I would have hated to know the result because the tension at the end was insane as literally both sides had a chance to win it with the boot at the death. Georgia though, as we go through some key events and stats and you guys let us know your thoughts, what a great start. Like they, they showed what they can do. Like they've got the wood over Portugal most of the time. And I should say the Portuguese crowd is incredible. There's a lot of Georgian fans there too, but boy, the Portuguese would have felt like they were at home. Such a huge contingent of Portuguese fans, very loud. Uh, but great hands from the Georgians early. Niniash really great offload of Tabu Dadza, first try of the game. Seven points to nil. Cracking start from the Georgians. You're thinking, man, maybe they're going to go get a bonus point win here. They can score after two minutes. But credit to the Georgian, those Georgian, the Portuguese defense. They held for long periods of Georgian pressure in the first half. And Georgia made some kind of just soft mistakes. Niniash really. Kicking the ball dead from outside his own 22. Means they've got to go all the way back to, to there for a Portuguese potential chance. Although Georgia did extend their lead on quarter of an hour uh, with a penalty, 10 points to nil. It looked like they'd scored a try on 17 minutes. Um, but there was a knock on through Jalagoni in the build up to one to Georgia. So he probably should have passed it in the build up Jalagonia, to be honest. He decided to, to run it himself when he had a man outside him. But... Yeah, uh, Georgia had all the ball, and um, if anything, you know, Portugal were just kind of hanging on. At one point, they had Storti trying to, like, run it out of his own 22. He offloaded, and he was in touch. The touch just put his flag up, but then the TMO checked. He wasn't in touch. They go back for a scrum. Then the Portuguese get free kicked at scrum time, which leads to a Georgian feed, which leads to a penalty, which leads to touch a maul. And then the Portuguese having to win a penalty at the breakdown. So that one mistake from the touch judge was almost pretty costly. But no points conceded uh, from a Portuguese point of view. But boy, they were under pressure territorial. They had just no, no, no ball inside the Georgian half. But their breakdown work was fantastic. The tackling was fantastic. To the point where, again, on half an hour, Georgia have to opt for three points because they can't score tries. So, yeah, 13 points to nil. Uh, Portugal offside. Um Portugal, though, on, like, what was it, 30, 34 minutes. It's maybe their second time in Georgia's 22 for the entire first half, and it's a try. It was just unbelievable. That guy, Storti, is, is quite incredible. Why was he not starting the first game? He is just lightning, and he's very, very agile. I mean, Georgia were just kind of defending around their own halfway line, and suddenly Portugal just passed the ball to that guy Storti in space. He has about three Georgia defenders on him. Steps and just puts the hammer down. He is away. It's a try out of nowhere. They can't convert it. But 13-5. Like Georgia's been knocking on the door the whole first half. Just to work that hard to get three pointers. And Portugal out of nowhere score of tries. Fantastic stuff from Portugal. But um, they paid... With a yellow card only a few minutes later when Fernandez, their big loose head prop, put his shoulder and no um, no arms into Mamukashvili, so it's a yellow card. It stays a yellow card, but yeah, puts his side under a lot of pressure. And um, yeah, G Georgia tried to punish during the yellow, but couldn't quite get it done. Maul, advantage go again. Maul held up, and that's half time. So Portugal kind of escape that early yellow card period without conceding any points. Georgia's had 75 carries to 29 in the first half. They've had a 7 from 7 line out to Portugal's 4 from 6. And uh, Portugal's conceded more penalties. So Georgia, a lot of attack. Not that much to show for it in the scheme of things. And in the second half, 
it's mostly Portugal. Like the commentators on my feed mentioned it. If you'd bought a ticket down that end of the field, that would have sucked because all the action was down the other end. I've had that happen to me. 2011 Rugby World Cup. I watched one game down the end of the field, All Blacks against Tonga, where most of the tries were all scored down the other end of the field. You're watching the game either on the screen or just from a bloody mile away. This was just one of those games. Second half, Portugal, um, their mall defense again holds. Uh, Georgia conceded a penalty for a high tackle. It's a bit of a soft one from a Georgian point of view when you got the extra man. Yellow card ends. It's still 13-8, so Georgia doing really well. Georgia go through nine phases, turnover ball. They go close, but then, then the Portuguese really, really start putting the pressure on, man. 51 minutes, a bunch of pressure. Georgia, penalties conceded. Georgia, yellow card warning because too many penalties conceded down their own end. Portugal, up for three points. Might as well get the scoreboard a little bit closer. Makes sense. And then they took the lead. Bloody Storti again. He comes out of nowhere, this guy. Um, it was the uh, the 10, Portela. He looks like he's going to go left, but then he fakes left and goes right. Offload ball to Storti. And that guy only needs the smallest of gaps. And bam, he's away. Unbelievable. I wish I'd seen more of that guy. Unbelievable. 13-8, Georgia are now behind after being in front for so much of that game. Uh, and the crowd is loving every second of it from the Portuguese point of view. Um, I mean, Georgia did have a chance from the restart. Gorgadza got held up. So more kind of desperate Portuguese defense. Then Portugal go 12 phases. They do a cross kick, but um, then they kind of give away a soft penalty by uh, clattering into the Georgian winger in the air, which is a bit of a let off. But then Portugal win a scrum penalty, which is a little bit uncharacteristic between these two sides, I would have thought. But then um, Portugal got a couple of lineouts. Their lineouts keep overthrowing, but Appleton keeps gathering them. It's, it's bizarre. They go through phases. They knock it on. Um, Storti is again looking dangerous, but Jaligonia stops him from potentially scoring a try, tackles him into touch. And then what can Georgia do? They need to find a way to get back into this game. They have not been in it in the second half. No points scored. Well, they go 19 phases. 19 phases, inching the Portuguese guys back. And then the backup halfback, Pedro Lucas, comes on, gives away a pretty soft penalty. He thinks the ball's out at the back of the ruck. Ref says it's not. So it's a soft penalty conceded. It means that the Georgians can kick for the corner. It looks like Matkava might have kicked it dead. But no, it's just inside. So it's a five meter line out. It's a mall. It goes over in the corner. The touch judge doesn't see it. The ref doesn't see it. They go to the TMO with just tell us what happened. And it's this man, Zabtaradza, the backup hooker who's come on and scored in the corner for Georgia. The scores are tied up 18 all. Matt Kava, that man who kicked the winning goal against Wales, has a chance to win it from the sideline, but his kick goes wide. 18 points apiece. And then Portugal win a penalty from the restart. I think it was Jalagoni who got pinged for not releasing. I'm not sure. But then it's uh, Portugal have got a chance to win it with a penalty. Remember, their regular goal kick has gone off by this point, but they got a chance to kick a winning penalty, and it goes wide. Brutal for them would have been a first ever World Cup win, but it's a draw. Crazy, crazy, crazy game. I was watching this like more than 12 hours delayed. Neither of these teams is probably going to make it out of there. Can they even make it out of their group? But I was on the edge of my seat. It was a cracking thing. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. Great watch. I prefer this to a 70 nil drumming, to be honest. Uh, run meters 540 to 420 to Georgia. Possession, though, 52-48 to Georgia. But first half is 67% Georgia. Second half is 62% Portugal. So proper game of two halves. Clean breaks, 6-7 to Portugal. Pretty even. Defenders beaten, 22-23 to Portugal. Pretty even. Turnovers conceded, 14 each. Pretty even. Georgia loves a mall, 9 to Portugal's none. Portugal loves a turnover, 8 to Georgia's 4. Their work at the breakdown was phenomenal. Ninash really still looks dangerous, 132 meters, 3 clean breaks, 11 defenders beaten, but also 5 turnovers conceded. Uh, Jaligonia makes 12 from 12 tackles. Uh, Madeira has 19 tackles attempted, 18 made, wins 2 turnovers. Storti, 123 meters, 3 clean breaks, 7 defenders beaten. Goodness gracious me, Portugal are a side, man. Disappointing from Georgia. In the scheme of things, Georgia as I said, was supposed to be challenging the sides ranked above them. 
not struggling with the side that they usually beat. So, yeah, crazy, crazy. Moral victory to the Portuguese, you would have to say. But, yeah, that's the game. It's a draw. Georgia have got Fiji next. Boy, they need to bounce back in that one. People have been saying that, you know, Fiji are going to pretty much guaranteed full points from their last two games. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, Georgia are going to, they're going to be fired up. They have to be. And then Portugal have got Australia. We'll know more about Australia's fate after their game against Wales tomorrow, at least my time. But yeah, 18 points apiece, first draw of the World Cup. You guys let us know your thoughts. And uh, yes, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.